Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I am also a designer for Sizzix. <clears throat> I don't have any sniffing, it's all here. <clears throat> I was worried I was gonna be Barry White today. So my husband and I live in Hamilton, Missouri, and um, we have been there 20 years. And before we were in Hamilton, we lived out in California. We wanted to move to a more rural area. And so literally my husband, you know, picked off of a map, the middle of the map, and we found this little place, Hamilton, Missouri. And he looked around it and he thought, well, there's some big cities around there, I could get a job. So we packed up our family and we moved to Missouri. The first night, really, I cried. I was, I was like, what have we done? What have we done here? And, uh, but then, the next day, some kids came and they invited my kids to go fishing and off they went down a gravel road with a pole on their shoulder. And I looked at my husband, I said, you could bury me here. And we fell in love with that tiny little town of Hamilton. So fast forward, you know, 20 years and my, my children have all grown now. They've all pretty much left the house and they wanted to help me find something to do to um, supplement my income so that my husband and I, you know, wouldn't have to live in their basements when we get old. <laughs> And, uh, and so they bought me this quilt machine, and the machine came, it was too big for our house, so we had to buy a building. The building actually cost less than the machine did, which you can imagine if you're from Missouri. So now though, we had a machine, this long arm quilting machine, in a building, which meant we had a business. And pretty soon we outgrew that building, and we moved to a building on Main Street. And Main Street, actually at the time, Main Street had just a couple of open shops, we had a gas station, we had a subway, very, very, uh, very small downtown. Most of the downtown was abandoned. And we realized at one point that we just had way too much fabric. So the kids decided they were gonna buy another building and put some fabric in there. And then they got too much fabric, so they bought another building, fixed it up and put fabric in there. So they're fixing up these buildings on the downtown and we currently have six shops open. And um, I mean, it's just, it's just growing. There are people walking up and down the streets. There's people are, it's busy, it's a busy little community. We have three more restaurants open. It's just a really fun, fun community to come to. A lot of people are coming and visited. So when we were doing machine quilting in our first little building, um, Alan came one day and asked me if I wanted to do tutorials. And I looked at him and I said, sure honey, what's a tutorial? I had not a clue what it was. And it was actually teaching people online how to quilt. And there wasn't a lot out there. So he started filming me and I started teaching people online how to quilt. And very quickly we developed a following. And so we teach a lot of people online, which in turn, when you teach somebody a skill, you know, they wanna meet you. And so they know about our, our shop, they know about our company, and we've taught them how to quilt online. So they're making this trek to Missouri to come and be part of, you know, this is part of their big adventure. It's just a really, really fun environment for quilting. We love the Block Magazine. It's a great fanner. <laughs> Perfect for I do love that menopausal women. So when I was a little girl, my grandma lived with us and she used to draw flowers and she'd draw them on everything. You'd get a card, you'd get a, on your napkin at dinner, she drew these little flowers and they were flowers out of her own mind. And she would embroider them on um, scraps of fabric and mostly denim. Even as she got older, you know, like she lived to be 100, she would sit every day and literally when she could not put a needle through this fabric, she used um, uh, needle nose pliers and would pull that needle through and she did it every day until the day she died, she would make one of these squares. And so actually I think I would take these and I would sew them together and um, I realized actually much later that I was making quilts before I realized I was making quilts because in my mind I was just sewing them together for her you know, and, um, and we were putting together wall hangings and quilts, but it wasn't quilting in my mind. So when I first started quilting, it was because I wanted this. I wanted my bed to look like this. I wanted this on my table. You know, I wanted those things uh, for my house. And, and I've noticed this with lots of other women too. They start, we all start for basically the same reason. But when you're passionate about something, you can't really stop it. So all of a sudden you're sewing, your house is filled up and you've got to sew, keep sewing. So you sew for your children, you fill up your children's houses, then you're on to your grandchildren and so forth and you keep sewing. And pretty soon you've filled up everybody's house that you know and you know what happens? We start donating, we start giving, we do quilts for kids, you know, Wounded Warrior, Quilts of Valor, Children's Mercy, all those different things. And this fabric that was so important to us at one time, we're now giving away. We're now sewing and giving. And mostly it's because we really can't stop sewing. It's a passion for us. It's what we love. Um, so the things that inspire me have to be old quilts. 
I love old quilts and because my mom didn't sew and my grandma didn't sew, I don't really have any old family quilts and people would bring in their old family quilts to me to, uh, to quilt on my quilting machine and I was just so envious. I just fell in love with them. And this one here, particularly, I fell in love with the Dresden mostly because I thought I would never, ever be able to do it. And once we figured out how to make a Dresden and uh, do it, it was so much easier than I thought. Um, I just love them. I'm a little Dresden crazy, I have to admit. And the quilt that's behind me up here also so inspires me. I love the idea of not wasting anything. And with a big family, you don't waste anything. And so all those squares are little tiny scraps that I, you know, I just kept for years in little buckets and bags and things like that. And I was able to get them all out, iron them, cut the shapes, and put together this whole quilt that was all just scraps. And so really I was able to make something where nothing was before. And I love that idea. I love the longevity of quilting. For a while we homeschooled our children. And I don't know about you, but I am not good with art. You know, I'm not good drawer. <laughs> I'm just, that's just not my thing. And so um, we discovered very quickly by going to the library and things like that, that we could use the Ellison dies. And seriously, Ellison saved me. I mean, totally, I am not a drawer. I can't cut out those things. But all of a sudden I could make these darling flowers and insects and puppies and whatever I needed for whatever project that child was working on to make it amazing. And I mean, I just love the Ellison dies. So when Sizzix approached me about uh, coming and working with them, and I discovered that they were tied in with Ellison, I was just like, yes, I just couldn't believe it because that was, for me, that was just like coming home. It was like the sweetest partnership because that really was what helped me when I was trying to teach my children all those years ago and now I in turn can help them. And if you use the dye, I'm telling you, you get eight accurate, precise, perfect cuts out of that. And so it really speeds up time for us and enables us to get a lot more done. And so I just really love Sizzix because of that. One of the things I loved when we started is that I really thought I was just sewing. I loved to sew and I thought I was just sewing. And so when we started doing these tutorials, it was so interesting to me because when the letters began to come, they, uh, they weren't what I expected at all. Remember, I'm thinking I'm sewing. So the first letters came from women who were handicapped. I mean, they could never take a class. They couldn't get out. They couldn't get their paraphernalia out. They couldn't, they didn't have a car big enough. They couldn't get their chair around the aisles of a store. Whatever it was, those were my first letters and they were so grateful that they could take a class. And then I would get letters from women with MS. I got a letter from a man with agoraphobia who, I mean, he couldn't, he, he, he you know, he had a self-imposed prison, but he said, for the first time, I feel like my life has meaning and purpose because he was able to take a class and make something and give a gift that was part of himself. And then I started getting letters from overseas and they were from people who don't have what we have. Uh, a woman in Iran, three pages of what her life is like on a daily basis. And her letter ended by saying, you have filled my war-torn life with color. And I was just, I mean, I was just stunned because I mean, I sat sobbing at my sewing machine and my son Alan came in and he's like, mom, are you okay? And I said, well, I really just thought I was sewing. This is so much more. And one of the things I've learned is that every quilt has a story and every quilter has a story. And it's just an amazing journey that we're all on. And it all ends up to where it changes us. With most hobbies, you, you know, it's just a hobby. But when you start quilting as a hobby, you start over here because you want it and it changes you. And pretty soon you're over here and you're doing what you can to bless the lives of others. It's just really a sweet journey.